Flame City family, what is up? It is a sleeping rose, Desi, Bobby, and Art coming at you at the grocery store for another baby-related haul. This is actually the top 10 superfoods you could feed your baby starting at six months. These are foods we've been, we've been feeding Rose now for a good couple months, and they're great building blocks to start the baby's nutrition, body, and immune system from the get-go so they live a strong, healthy lifestyle, right? Absolutely. So before we get started, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share, all those great things, but there's a bell icon below the video. We have so much content launching every single week, you're gonna wanna get a push on your device. All right, first off for superfood for babies is fat. Take a look at the wall of oils here. Now, we have many videos about oils, but when it comes to babies and superfoods, there's two fats I really think you wanna to introduce to their body because they're superfoods. And the first one is gonna be ghee, and the second one is gonna be coconut oil. But the ghee really should be grass-fed, not just organic, and the coconut oil should be virgin, cold-pressed, not refined, right? Desi, why are fats like this important for the baby? Uh, fats are great first foods for baby because think about it mom's milk contains about 50 to 60 percent fat and it is used by the baby to build uh, its brain yeah. the baby's brain is about 60 percent fat and it's built by the fat uh, the baby eats mm -hmm. uh, so very important to introduce those good fats uh, for example ghee ghee is amazing it is it fights toxins free radicals and inflammation. And coconut oil has uh, lauric acid and is very healing to the gut and it's virus fighting. Yep. Uh, I would use these in uh, baked vegetables, steamed vegetables, cooked fruit for the baby. It adds a great flavor yeah. and uh, amazing nutrition. Yeah, we're gonna put some recipes down below, but also if you go to the Flav City Instagram, I have a saved story with Rose's cute little face on there called Baby Food, and you'll see how Desi makes pears that are cooked in coconut oil, and whatever Rose doesn't eat, we eat because it's amazing, right? So compare these two geese, though. See, this says USD organic and pasture raised. This says 100% grass fed. This is 100%. This is okay, but because it's organic, it's still eating grains, which I think cows shouldn't. So you really want grass-fed. Grass-fed is where it's at because grass-fed cows have a higher nutritional profile than uh, the, the corn-fed or the grain-fed, right? Yeah. And when it comes to the coconut oil, you wanna get cold pressed. That's very, very important. I would get the big jug at uh, Costco. Yeah. It's fantastic for you. So anything else from this aisle or no? We're good. All right, let's move on to superfood number two and Rose is awake just in time for the video. How perfect is that? Hi. Hey, Bubba. All right, for superfood number two, we're gonna go eggs, but not just any eggs. We're gonna go pasture-raised eggs. Egg really is the perfect food, especially for babies. Desi, why? Yeah, and not just eggs. We're talking the egg yolk, you know? Good point. Very careful. We don't wanna give egg whites to a baby until one year old because it's highly inflammatory. Uh, we only wanna give the baby the egg yolk. Uh, it is great fat and the perfect protein. It's a combination of minerals, vitamins, and amino acids. And the way you want to prepare the egg yolk is you want to boil the egg for about four to five minutes. Uh, you want the egg yolk to still be runny and jammy inside because once you uh, cook it fully, all the benefits of the minerals, vitamins, uh, they're highly decreased and they're actually the egg yolk is very hard to digest at that point. So you want to serve it warm and runny. Yeah. So even though the egg white has the protein, the inflammation is there. You don't want to give that to babies. And judging from a quality standpoint, you really want to go pasture raised because those eggs have a higher nutritional value than any other free range or cage free. But because it's a baby, I would say you got to get pasture raised and either non-GMO or come over here, Art, even better, I thought I grabbed it, but I grabbed the wrong ones. I would get the organic ones because keep in mind, all eggs or chickens have a uh, supplemental feed of grain. Unless it's organic, it's gonna be a GMO supplemental feed like basic uh, pasture raised eggs like that. So even for adults, but even more for babies, you don't want them having any GMO products. So keep that in mind. Now let's get out of here and move on to superfood number three. Every time I make chicken livers on Instagram stories, people freak out, but they're not just a powerhouse. For adults, organic, gotta be organic chicken livers are so good for babies. Desi, tell them why. Yeah, uh, livers are rich in zinc, iron, and copper, which is so important 
for your growing baby because at six months, that's when the baby starts needing uh, those vitamins, especially zinc and iron because the mom's milk cannot provide enough of that. So it's very important to start feeding your baby um, livers. And um, the way I prepare this is typically I would just saute some liver in some ghee, ghee. which I already talked about, uh, and then mash it up. Or I would boil it uh, in some bone broth and uh, just serve it that way with a little bit of yeah. uh, bone broth. Yeah. Which leads us to actually the next super power food for six months old babies, which is bone broth. Yes, but before we go there, um, it's gotta be organic chicken livers because just like the uh, eggs, Absolutely. it's not organic, they're eating GMO feed. Even better, if you live near a farm or a co-op, they're gonna have pasture raised. Chicken livers here in Chicago, go to a place called Local Foods. They have Gunthorpe pasture raised organic chicken livers that are amazing. We can, we can also do calf liver. Yeah, right, so while the ones at the grocery store are good, a locally sourced one is gonna be way better. Let's go buy the bone broth and tell why that is a superfood for the baby. All right, as you can see, Desi, or Rose is getting very excited about the bone broth. And there's some great store-bought bone broth right now, but you really want to make homemade, which I'll tell you why in a minute. Adesia, what is the magic of bone broth for babies? Yeah, bone broth is amazing for the gut. So it eases digestion. It is an electrolyte solution. It has a lot of minerals, and um, I would start giving this to a six-month baby and up. Not only that, uh, if your baby gets sick, it's an amazing hydrating solution. So. If your baby is sick uh, and needs to be hydrated, keep giving them broth yeah. and alternating that with broth and coconut water, which is another um, superfood, which yeah. we'll talk in a little bit. Did you mention though, so bone broth also has collagen, gelatin, and chondroitin. That's why it's so good for the good gut. for your gut and your immune system. So it's really important because when babies are young, their immune system is low, but they're gonna have the most uh, microbiome in their gut Ever. So it's important yeah. to foster that. Now, that being said, all right, look, we have some great brands here for adults. Um, Kettle and Fire is fantastic. Epic is fantastic. Even the Whole Foods brand is fantastic. But the reason why you can't give this to babies is because of the extra ingredients. So stuff like uh, parsley, celery, carrots, and onions, while that's really good for mommy and daddy, uh, a six-month-old baby, a 12-month-old right. baby, you can't have that, right? Yes, uh, so uh, for the first couple of months, you want to uh, make your own bone broth that has no uh, vegetables or any other additives in it, salt or any, any other things. Why? Because, you know, the baby can't handle it. Yeah. You just want just the bones in there and get a good selection of bones. You want to do femur bones, you want to do yep. Uh, knuckle bones and you want to do some meaty bones as well to get the most nutrition out there and just add a little bit of vinegar that's yeah. pretty much that's all the ingredients um, and once the baby turns about eight months old you can start adding carrots and celery and then at nine months uh, you can start adding onions and, and stuff like that yeah. uh, and make it more flavorful but once I make the bone broth then I would not just uh, feed it to the baby straight up I would actually cook yes. veggies in it I would cook Carrots in it, parsnips in it, celery, things like that. Yep. Put it in and a baby bullet, mash it up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll put the recipe down below. I highly recommend doing it in a pressure cooker. It only takes three hours. And if you do it in the Instant Pot, it will uh, contain the smell so your house doesn't smell like a barn. It's really, really fantastic. Okay. We're going off to coconut water next, right? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Next up is the fantastic liquid known as coconut water, which comes a couple different ways I'll talk about in a second. Odessi, why is coconut water the bomb? Yeah, well, basically coconut water is the most natural electrolyte solution. It has the same mineral balance as the human body. And did you know that w during war times, coconut water was actually successfully used as a straight up IV? It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. So you think about electrolytes, you think about a potassium, magnesium, yep. calcium, usually a drink that will come in the form of pellets or tablets that have other bad ingredients. It's all in here, which is amazing, yeah. right? Great hydrating drink for your baby. At what age? Uh, starting around nine to 10 months. Uh, and like I said, it's great, especially if the baby is sick, alternate bone broth with coconut uh, water to keep them uh, well uh, hydrated. Yeah, now while coconut water is good, the one that's pasteurized in the middle aisles is not great because it's high temperature pasteurized. This brand, Harmless Harvest, is better because it's high pressure pasteurized. When you do that, you don't create as much heat. <clears throat> yeah. 
So you preserve the natural nutrients or the living nutrients in here. <coughs> but even better would be one of these. This is a Young Thai coconut. And this is actually $4. And this, no, this is $4.49. This is $5, so this is cheaper. This has more water than this bottle, and it has the meat in there too. The meat is great, so oh that's God. where you want to like scoop out the meat and make a nice uh, smoothie. little smoothie or custard for the baby. Um, you're, you're getting both the meat and the water with this one, so I would go for this one, and it's not pasteurized. Well, the meat also has the saturated fat, oh, the MCT absolutely. oils, and there's this drink that I boast about at Trader Joe's. It's the organic coconut smoothie, and you could actually give it to your babies. Instead of buying that, buy one of these, open it, and blend it up with the meat. You'll make that powerhouse smoothie with the electrolytes, with the saturated fat, with the hydrating uh, minerals in there. It's fantastic stuff, you guys. A couple of weeks ago, Desi asked me to come home with some caviar for Rose, and I had to do a double take. Luckily, it was salmon caviar, which is out of stock right now, but they have white fish caviar, which is $10. Uh, why is this important for babies? Yeah, so caviar, that's not just for uh, bougie people, right? <laughs> it's actually a powerhouse of, of nutrition. Uh, it's uh, rich in all sorts of vitamins, vitamin A, K2, DHA, vitamin D, uh, just absolutely fantastic for your baby. You can start feeding them fish roe at around um, eight months old. Uh, it's a great nutrient to protect uh, from toxins. And the way I typically serve it, I would just mesh it in whatever um, like food they're having, maybe some you know veggies or maybe uh, their egg yolk in the morning. Uh, just any way you can sneak it in. Um, it does contain salt because it's, uh, it needs to be preserved. preserved. Ah. So don't be afraid of that. Uh, it is not the highest quality salt typically, but just a little bit, it's not so bad. And when we talk about salt, you want to give um, just the highest quality unrefined. salt, unrefined yeah. um, sea salt or uh, rock salt to your baby. Yep. All right, next up is sauerkraut juice, but we're not talking about any sauerkraut. It has to be fermented sauerkraut. So it's gonna be in the refrigerator section and it's gonna say fermented, but most importantly, look at the ingredients and you're gonna see there's not any vinegar here. And while vinegar is not bad, the vinegar is not needed in a naturally fermented process. This takes longer, it's typically more expensive, but it has a huge probiotic benefit that Desi's gonna talk about. Absolutely, and why do you wanna feed that to your six month old baby? Because it has lots of probiotics, it's a great digestive aid and provides adequate stomach acidity for your baby. So once in a while, you can just add like a, little, a teaspoon yep. of sauerkraut juice to their food, just a little bit, and that's gonna be great for them. Uh, at about 10 months, you can uh, start giving them little chunks of the actual sauerkraut as well. Yep, all right, and then we'll end the video right behind Art. We'll go to another fermented product, kefir. Here it is. All right, so we'll talk about kefir. A kefir. This is actually one of the best ones oh, for young babies, and it's also brand new to the market because it's dairy free and it has coconut meat and coconut water. So, just like we talked about that, it's the electrolytes, it's the good saturated fat. There's no added sugar here. It's a bit of a, it's fermented dextrose, which you need for a kind of fermentation or like a, a, a kefir like that. But this is really good. Why? So, coconut kefir or kefir. <laughs> Uh, I would feed starting at, at 10 months old. Uh, you can make your own if you don't want to buy this one, uh, just because of um, the dextrose. But uh, kefir is great because it has so many probiotics. It's a great digestive aid. It fights toxins so and, and aids detoxification. So um, you can also do um, dairy kefir. Uh, however, I wouldn't feed pastured dairy uh, until two years of age. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have as access to a farm uh, yeah. where you can get raw dairy, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that's uh, up to you guys. Yeah, like in Chicagoland, we have all grass farms in Dundee. But if you're going to give kefir to a two-year-old or older, it's going to be grass-fed and organic. This is pasteurized, but we don't recommend giving this to kids under two years old, right? Yeah, pa pasteurized dairy we don't recommend uh, for uh, ages two and under. And the one that's made from almonds, 
would be after what year? Yeah, not uh, all right. So this we want to do after about two years again. Yeah. We'll properly soak nuts and stuff. And like it that. has to be unsweetened, unflavored, because when you flavor it and add sugar, then number one, the sugar is alarmingly high, but the sugar cancels out the probiotic benefit. So it has to be plain. Very, very important. Right. All right, Rose got a little upset. She's very, very hungry, but she was a super trooper for most of the day, you guys. Uh, that is it. Like, subscribe, share, all those good things. If you're wondering about this, this is called the Tush Baby. It's a game changer. It's like a Shark Tank invention, and it's so awesome. I'll leave the link down below. But what other videos do you want to see regarding kids, right? We have this one. We have the one, what to feed your baby between 6 and 12 months. Just leave a comment down below. We make the videos for you guys, so keep the requests coming. Uh, we got two more videos going below us right now. But Desi, Rose, wherever they are feeding right now, and Art and I will see you soon. And until then, we say in two like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace.